insurance is a contract so like every other contract it has to follow certain specific norms which is legal norms an offer an acceptance a consideration agreement of the parties to what the insurance what is to be covered the persons who enter into contract must be of ma a major must be of sound mind and the insurance which we are contracting should be what is legal and in existence so what we look at the first and most important a contract so when we enter into a contract both parties must be clear in their mind of what they are getting into so if i come to an insurance company and say i want to insure my motor car and the insurance company gives me an insurance policy for insuring my home there is no contract because we are not in agreement on what insurance is to be given i have asked for a motor car insurance and the insurance company has insured my home so that is a contract cannot be enforced now to get an idea of what is the risk so an insurance company enters into contract they have agreed that this is what it coverage is to be provided there has to be a consideration so the consideration that we talk of from the customer's point of view from the proposer the person who is coming to ins for taking insurance is normally called the proposer after the insurance is placed they become the insured so the proposer approaches the insurance company and asks for a particular insurance if the insurance company is accepting the risk they say okay we are willing to accept you pay a consideration the consideration is the premium on the part of the customer the consideration is also there on the part of the insurance company and that consideration is in the form of the promise to pay in the event of an unfortunate event as decided should occur so once the consideration is placed and accepted we move forward towards issuing of a document which is the written terms of the contract and that is our policy so the policy document is a written contract of what has been entered into so what is important is that this policy can be then legally challenged in the event of any one breaching terms so the contract terms of an insurance policy are laid down of an insurance product are laid down in the policy so this is a very vital document we may have read in the newspaper we may have seen an ad we may have seen a company's publicity material certain facts may be stated in all of them but the none of those facts appear in the policy wording so the final document is our policy wording we must always ensure that the policy wording is as stated as understood as of required by the customer or the proposer who has taken the insurance now when we look at this policy document the first thing that we will notice is the heading when we say the heading it is it will usually be the logo of the insurance company the name of the insurance company and its registered office that is what comprises the heading the next is the preamble which is also called the recital clause so it is that first part of the insurance policy where it is stated whereas the insured has entered into a contract with the so and so in dash insurance company for the purpose of these terms and conditions for insurance of this product so what we see in this preamble are the names of the parties who are entering into this contract the nature of the contract it could be for fire insurance of the home it could be fire insurance for the factory it could be a motor car insurance it could be a medical insurance that is now stated as the preamble so these are the and we have 
part of the preamble is that the proposal is the proposal as placed before the insurance company has been accepted so the document on the basis of which the insurance company has accepted the details and is now willing to give the cover so that comes in the preamble the signature the signature is required to show that the contract is completion so the authorized insurance official will sign the policy and show that this yes these are the terms of the contract operative which has been accepted the operative clause so here is the clause or the scope of the policy which states that what are the terms what are we covering and what is the nature of the risk so if you are looking at health insurance the operative clause will say in the event of a person meeting with a being with a sickness or a disease or an accident and is required to be hospitalized for a certain period this would be falling under the terms of the policy so that's a medical insurance in the case of a motor insurance it could be the insurance of the car or the truck or the bus for accidental damages and for liabilities to outsiders who are called third parties so that will be part of the operative clause so we will know from that that is being insured for a certain branch now what are the branches of insurance general insurance according to the insurance act is divided into three branches fire insurance marine insurance and miscellaneous or accident insurance so what doesn't fall under fire and marine follows falls under accident within accident insurance we have motor insurance we have health insurance we have personal accident insurance we have other properties like burglary and all risk we have insurances of engineering projects called contractors all risk and uh, storage cum erection we have operational for insurances like machinery breakdown electronic equipment which insures computers so all various types of insurances which will be now mentioned in the operative clause depending on the policy that is being taken a policy an insurance policy just does not cover everything it will have certain clauses so sometimes you will come across an insurance policy where they say only if these events take place will we come or will the insurance policy play so when the risk are specified or the nature of the perils are specified it is known as the specified perils policy if no risk or uh, types of losses are specified we say it all types of risk are covered except what is excluded then it becomes what is known as an all risk policy remember an all risk policy does not cover everything it covers just some things with exclusions which are more important so in an all risk policy we see what is not covered in a normal specified perils policy these are the items covered these are the risks that are covered these are the kind of incidents or perils that will happen which will result in loss which we are covering but these are also subject to certain things that have to be done or certain things which will not be covered so an example is exceptions so what we call them exclusions or exceptions they are also part of the scope of the policy but now we are saying what is not covered so exceptions are what is not covered some of them will be general exceptions some of them will be specific to them for example a person who is driving a vehicle under the influence of alcohol will be an exclusion a person participating in major hazardous sports or undertaking hazardous activities would be an exception if that is their normal employment then the insurance company has to be informed because the risk is not a normal risk it is a higher risk so insurance company has to look at different aspects so the exceptions are exclusions under these circumstances insurance will not pay for the loss in addition to the exceptions then we have the third which is called the conditions so within this policy the next is conditions now conditions are of two types one is called one condition is called implied and the second is called express 
what conditions that are mentioned in the policy are express conditions because they are written, they are specified. It is known. But there are implied conditions which are understood, which are not required to be written. So the first implied condition, insurance for which ins any insurance is taken, that must be legal. So insurance cannot be taken for things that are illegal. So smuggled goods cannot be insured. What is not permitted by law cannot be insured. The second implied condition is that the property must be in existence. The subject matter has to be in existence at the time when insurance is taken. If, for example, if a truck has been burned down and the owner of the truck, because there was no insurance, the owner of the truck comes to the insurance company and asks for insurance after the truck is burnt, the implied condition is breached because the truck does not exist, it is burnt, so insurance company cannot give insurance. So in the normal cases, insurance company will send an inspect, will ask for will go and inspect the vehicle. If the vehicle is not in existence, they are not supposed to insure. So these are two implied conditions which are not stated in the policy. The other implied conditions are with regard to the principles of insurance. That is, the person who has ownership right or insurable interest only can insure the property. So a person, an individual cannot insure property that does not belong to him. Similarly, a financier has insurable interest on a particular property mortgage can insure it. A person who has who is a bailey can insure the property to the extent of his fees, but not otherwise. So ownership right, which will result in loss taking loss to the person in the event of the property being destroyed, only those people can insure. So insurable interest in general insurance must be present at all times. A vehicle is owned by an individual and subsequently sold to another, so insurable interest is gone, the insurance policy ceases. There is certain laws which allow motor third party to continue, so motor third party continues, but otherwise insurance law, under insurance law, subject matter of insurance is no longer in the name of the old owner, so the insurance comes to an end, the contract is over. So insurable interest. Then insurance, that is an implied condition we have to ensure. Now the other conditions are stated. So one of the most important conditions is of utmost good faith. So utmost good faith and disclosure of material facts is important. So the condition, our conditions can be divided into four. One is conditions precedent to contract. That is conditions before contract starts. That means the insured must or the proposer must give all details of the risk before the insurance company goes on risk. That is precedent to the risk. So material facts have to be disclosed. And material facts, that is any risk or any factor which makes the risk greater which will require the insurance company's underwriter to consider in detail. If not disclosed, the policy can, the insurance can come to an end immediately because it is a void contract. We are not on equal terms. A condition subsequent to contract. During the course of the year of the insurance, if any changes take place, an example could be a property from which was an office is now converted into a warehouse or a storage risk. The risk has become greater. The insurance company needs to be informed to decide whether they wish to continue or on export terms. Similarly, if there's additional property has come in to be insured in that particular location, this must be informed. Otherwise, the insurance company will insure only original property and not what comes in subsequently. So these are all subsequent to contract. Any changes in the risk, any changes in the location, these are subsequent to contract condition. Condition precedent to liability is with regard to before a loss takes place, 
what conditions a customer has to take care of. The customer has to look after the property carefully. Because there is insurance does not mean they should be careless. So they have to act as if uninsured. Similarly, they have to take all precautions to protect the property in all circumstances and cannot just say, if I have insurance, so I don't need to bother. Carelessness is not. So do negligent acts, grossly negligent acts, deliberate acts are all conditions subsequent precedent to liability. They cannot be covered. Conditions subsequent to liability. So after a loss occurs, what has to be done? Inform the insurance company. Take care. Don't let the loss be aggravated. Provide all documentary proof of loss, whatever insurance company will require. What will happen after the loss is assessed if there is a dispute, the condition of arbitration, the condition of going to court for a suit. All these form part of conditions subsequent to the loss or subsequent to liability. So four types of conditions, all of them relating to what is expressed or what is stated in the policy wordings. The schedule, the most common thing that most of you see, and that is the printout that comes out from the computer stating the policy number, the name of the insured, the location or what property is being covered, what is the sum insured, the description of the property or what description of the details of what is on risk, all those including the premium, premium charged, these form part of the schedule of the policy. So schedule of the policy changes based on the insured and the properties to be insured. So different property schedules for different each every proposal that would be there. So what we find is the policy has the heading, preambles, Operative clause, exceptions and conditions will usually be the printed format, a standard printed format. The schedule will be where all the changes or what the details of individual policy details would be found. Now the policy document is an agreement until it is signed and stamped. So a stamp of the document converts the policy into a legally enforceable contract. So our most important, any dispute on coverage, it is the policy document legally signed and stamped which makes it legally enforceable. So when we receive our policies, we must check that what we ask for is covered. So how do we look at the policy? So the policy is interpreted as per legal understanding. So it's a legal document. Over the course of the years, certain terms have become defined with cases and those continue to be the definition as understood in legal practice. Any change in such definition has to be clearly specified in the policy. So the legal interpretations of words uh, have to be there. And if any changes are what is the under, understood legal practice has to be clearly defined in any policy. The contract must be clear. Now, this is very important. Both parties have to be agreed to the contract. So, the policy document is prepared by the insurance company and it is necessary for them to make sure that the wordings are clear and understood by both parties so that both the similarity of understanding is there. So, policy construction has to be in a manner which can be easily understood as well as stand scrutiny in a court of law. So a policy document is normally interpreted in the courts whether the written and the printed word. So the written word, when we say written, that is handwritten or typed rather than the printed word. So anything that is handwritten will take precedent over what is printed because it means a change has been taken place on that policy wording. So printed is the standard wording. Any changes made on the policy by hand will take precedence. So the court will interpret that as being the understanding of the policy. Now there are two important conditions that we have to remember in the written and printed interpretations. One is, one is called contra preferentum. So it will go against the person who has drafted the document. 
So insurance company has drafted the policy. Any condition which is contrary or contrary to something stated earlier in the policy, the, the interpretations by the court will be in favor of the customer because the insurance company should have made sure that there was no bias or contrary opinions written in the policy. The clause paramount is another condition. Now, this is very important. So, even if there is a contrary wording in the policy, if a clause paramount is stated against a particular condition or clause, that overrides all contrary definitions. So, you will come across such things during mar in marine insurance. Clause paramount is norms used occasionally in marine insurance by some insurance companies. The proposal form is the offer document from the customer to act for the insurance. So they have given a lot of details. But in the interpretation of the policy, it is the policy wordings that will overrule what is stated in the proposal. So any defect or any fact not mentioned in the policy which should have been mentioned from the proposal details, if it is not incorporated in the policy, the policy will be interpreted and not the proposal form. So interpretation of the policy, we have to ensure that the policy changes are clearly defined and explained. Other documents that we come across in insurance, the first is the endorsement. Now endorsement, endorsement on a policy. Endorsement means a change being made in a policy. We have seen that the policy document is a standard printed form. So if we require any additional cover or certain things are to be disallowed, they will form as part of endorsement. Let us take a simple example of a motor insurance. In motor insurance policy taken package policy where motor car is insured. Additional fittings have been added, electron, electrical fittings have been added, which are not in the normal value of the uh, motor car. So the insurance, uh, the customer has asked to insure these additional fittings we have, which he has installed after he has purchased the motor car. So those additional fittings are covered by means of additional premium. An endorsement is passed on the policy stating that these, this property covered or is also covered while it is on the vehicle. So an endorsement number. Now, in motor insurance, these endorsement numbers are already from the tariff in existence. So we, they normally call it IMT, that's Indian Motor Tariff Numbers, various numbers, 21, 24, 29, 38, all these are add-ons. So when you say IMT 24, 29, you understand that it is adding on a certain additional cover. But there may be others which are not standard where an endorsement has to be passed. So an endorsement, for example, in fire insurance, we ask for endorsement to cover earthquake. So earthquake endorsement will come into play. We ask for an additional cover for terrorism cover. Endorsement for covering ter terrorism will be coming. So an endorsement could be additional covers under the policy. It could also be excluding certain things on the policy. So you will find in marine insurance, when terrorism endorsed, terrorism cover is withdrawn for the time that the cargo is lying in the warehouse. So while it is on in transit, it is covered, but the minute it reaches the warehouse, in, uh, whilst in the course of transit, on transshipment, it is not covered at those warehouses. So that is withdrawal of some terrorism cover for a short period of time. So this is my means of endorsements. So what is an endorsement? changes made on the policy or additions, additions or deletions from policy are endorsements. So they are part of the policy document, but they're subsequent to the policy being issued, there may be further endorsements, additions during the course of the year. For example, a client has changed his office address, he needs to incorporate it on his policy, so he writes to the insurance company that my office is no longer at this address, now we have shifted here, please incorporate. So the insurance company will ascertain that the risk is same and then they will pass an endorsement stating that from this date, this property is insured, the property is insured at this new location, the full address will be given. So that is also an endorsement. 
An endorsement could also be that a sum insured is increased or decreased. So during the course of the year, there will be endorsements passed for any additions, deletions or any other factors. So normally endorsements in the course of the year would be additional premium endorsements, refund premium endorsements or neither interest, neither insure, uh, refund or addition but just changes in the risk. So endorsements can be found both on policy as well as on independently issued during the year. So this practice is in general insurance. The next important document is the Certificate of Insurance. Now, Certificate of Insurance is utilized in two departments, that is Motor Insurance and Marine Insurance. In Motor Insurance, this certificate is a vital document. It is a requirement under the Motor Vehicle Act, which, may, which states that any motor vehicle which is plying on the public roads must have insurance to cover third party. And the wordings and draft of that motor certificate is as laid down in the Marine, sorry, Motor Vehicle Act, 1988. So the certificate of motor in motor insurance is the proof of third party liability, and every vehicle owner is required to carry this document at all times on their vehicle. The second certificate is in marine insurance. This is normally issued when a marine open policy is for cargo or marine. Open covers are issued for cargo insurance. This is a document again which states that the insurance is taken for a particular cargo and the extent, the values and all details of the cargo are stated. It is required normally in the export-import trade because customs will require to ensure properties going out of India, certificates, proof of this, the documentary proof of insurance and factors of what is the cargo going is required by customs. So this certificate of insurance is common in marine cargo insurances. The other document that we have is our renewal notice. Now a renewal notice is a service, a service being provided by the insurance company. It is not a compulsory issuance. It is normally issued about 30 to 40 day, 45 days before the insurance is expired. Renewal notice is essentially informing the customer in advance that his policy is expiring at the, in a short period of time and he needs to renew it. If any change is required to be made, he should inform the insurance company beforehand so that they can work out the new premium. So it is not a binding document. It has no legal basis. But in the event of a customer send, uh, insurance company issuing a renewal notice and the customer asking for renewal, taking the renewal on the same terms with the same premium, then it becomes a commitment for the insurance company. But a renewal notice is subject to no claims being made. So in the, as the renewal notice is issued 45 days earlier, there could be changes in the risk between that date of issue and the date of the policy expiring. It is, a depend, it is requirement of the customer that the customer should inform the insurance company of any changes subsequent to the renewal notice being issued. So this is a very important factor because renewal notices in motor insurance normally give the no claim bonus earned. But this is a 45 day, so at the last day of the policy there could be a claim. Insurance company should be informed that there has been a loss so that the insurance company can rectify the no claim bonus premium and recover the amount. So renewal notice is another document you will come across in insurance companies. Another document is also known as the cover note. It has no legal standing. It is just a document which says that provisional cover has been given. Now we have to remember that in insurance, until premium is received, insurance company cannot go on risk. So once an insurance company has received the premium, but for some reason all details of the risk are not known or some rates have to be reworked, they may issue a document called the cover note. It is a temporary document, normally valid for 30 days. Within those 30 days, all details should be received by the insurance company and a proper policy document can be issued. So a cover note does not have a legal sanctity. It will not be used, cannot be used 
in a court of law as evidence of a contract except for motor third party there it could be a temporary document for motor third party insurance as per requirement of the motor vehicle act in which case this is normally given when new vehicles are involved where the registration number or is not yet received insurance company may issue this temporary document of a cover note two very important forms which we are now looking at the first is the proposal form the material fact and insurable interest has to be cleared here a proposal form is an offer from a customer for insurance so the customer is coming to us for insurance and they give us a proposal form proposal form is used for all retail insurance products when we say retail we talk of health individual and family health policies motor insurance policies home policies of individuals medical policies of individuals a proposal form is a must in the retail it is also for smes where we have a compulsory proposal form it is only for fire insurance of large risk that there is in proposal form may not be required except for marine insurance marine cargo insurance every other insurance policy in uh, general insurance requires a proposal form so the proposal form has what we call generic questions and specific questions the generic question will be the common questions asked across all proposal forms the name of the insured or proposer their address and contact information what is the nature of the business they are doing for what period of insurance the period they require insurance general insurance policies are normally for 12 months customers may want a shorter period of 6 months then they have to specify 12 months 6 months or the dates from which the policy is required the existing insurance history whether this this particular property or the for which they seek insurance is has an insurance previously for last 3 to 5 years insurance history is normally asked for similar so also any loss history or claims history they have made claims against any under any policy for this particular property that is also required to be given if they have been convicted of any uh, crimes or convictions have been against the insured of with regard to the property this information should also be provided and the last the declaration a very important where the person states that i declare that all the information is true to the best of my knowledge and belief so that he converts this proposal form then becomes is converted into a promise or a, it is converted into a document of contract of insurable interest is brought into the play the specific questions are now to the particular risk if a person is coming to take health insurance they will give the they will give the details of their age the nature of any health problems they may have in existence details of the the deep the height weight and other factors so this information is specific to the individual for health insurance similarly for a motor car they will give the make a model serial number engine chassis number the type of vehicle it is whether it is a sedan or saloon or it's a truck or a taxi or a rickshaw these have to be specified its year of manufacture so risk that are specific what is the value that they are taking who is going to be driving the vehicle all these are factors specific to the particular risk that is being taken and then the value for which insurance is required some insured is the value for which insurance is required this is all the part of a proposal form in addition an insurance company may uh, may issue an additional question for additional details these are normally done for example if factories are looking at pollution cover they will ask for pollution details there may be also a risk engineer if the risk is uh, in a high risk zone insurance companies may ask an engineer to submit a report so all these are part of the risk cover and this this is our standard proposal form so proposal form is the basis on which the insurance policy is then sub, uh, issued the contract has started 
after the contract starts a loss has taken place now the customer has to give us the claim form claim form again has the name and address and business of the customer or the policy holder or the insured the policy number has to be mentioned so the insurance company can link to a particular risk whether there are other insurances in force for that risk because there is a condition in the policy which says if more than one policy covers the same property then all policies will share what is called the condition of contribution so other insurance details in force for the same property has to be given for the same property and the same perils then the date and the time of the loss or incident which has caused the damage that has to be also given with a little description of what happened and how did it happen where the where the loss has taken place and the description of any present parties who are anyone who are witnesses to it also required all the authorities have to be informed who have been informed for example if there's been a fire the fire brigade has been called the police have been involved a burglary involves a burg uh, the police coming into the picture so any authorities have been uh, informed details of that are required to be given the claim form will also give an itemized list of the loss so a detailed list of what has been damaged or lost has to be given with the values so the insurance company is aware that the of the full value or the nature of the losses which they can then verify and the last again a declaration which the customer is giving to say that what is stated above is true so he is committing that this information is true to his best knowledge so it, tomorrow at a later date if it is found that in details are not given properly the customer can be or insured can be asked what was the reason so the claim form gives these details so we have now seen in the course of our lectures we have seen the various documents that are required in an insurance in the normal course of general insurance we have seen a few of your questions well i am quite surprised um, we are happy to uh, see all of you from all over india and we have uh, our viewer, uh, viewers from tanzania and dubai also thank you for coming online what there are the queries are common queries related to the exam which will be answered subsequently but two two queries that are related to our class our session today which was one is alternative to a certificate of insurance for motor vehicle as i told you insurance companies normally issue cover note it's a temporary document its validity for motor insurance is limited it is permitted under the motor law specifically for vehicles where new vehicles where registration number or full particulars are still not available and this is given by the insurance companies author authorized officials of an insurance company could issue this cover note so this is a common cover note document that would be given for motor but each insurance company will have its own practices because this there is a tendency to misuse the issue of cover notes so insurance companies are keeping a strict watch on cover notes with regard to salvage value we, when we are dealing with the claims subject on claims we will come be coming to that other subjects like marine and others will be dealt with by the concerned faculty on the dates that you will be we will be you will be concerned with later on so we have today seen the overall in view of insurance the insurance market in india how insurance originated the regulatory practices and pract regulatory environment in india the practices the intermediaries and the various categories of insurance companies in india we have seen all the documents that are now standard documents that are to be found in an insurance policy in the insurance market in india based on this i think you should be able to answer a number of the questions with related to chapter 1 and 2 of general insurance and with this i terminate my session on the practice of general insurance i will see you all shortly on thursday when we have our next sub, uh, chapters 3 and 4 will be dealt with thank you